Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Custom Carving and Epoxy UK. And as you can see, the snow is melting in the UK, so it's going. Uh, but it got me to thinking, um, there's a few things in my living room that I wanted to change around. So in my living room, you'll probably see, I've got sort of these floating shelves on the wall with these tiny little succulents on, with these um, succulent pots, uh, which are great. I love them. I think that they, they don't take much looking after and they grow really nicely. Just add a bit of greenery to your home. Um, but these are pretty plain. I think they're from Ikea and they're not very me. So I've ordered a mold from uh, Amazon with some little flower pot molds. And I thought I would make some out of resin to see what difference they look like. So if that's what you're interested in, you're in the right place and let's get over to the workshop. So back over at the workshop and I've not gloved up yet because I'm not mixing the resin yet. I just want to show you the plan. So um, I've got this little four set of um, little plant pot molds from Amazon. I think it was about six quid um, off the top of my head. Um, all slightly different shapes and sizes. Um, and this is the one I've decided to go for because I love the geometric shapes on it. Hopefully it's going to come out in a mold. So I've, it, I think it takes around about five ounces of resin. I've just literally done the water test and it fit around about five ounces just under in there. So the plan is, I'm gonna do it like a bit of a dirty pour because I love dirty pour because it just lets the resin do whatever it's gonna do. <laughs> um, so one of my favorite colors is copper. So I'm gonna be using that. I'm gonna be using gold. I'm gonna be using this pearlescent sort of white and I'm going to be using this metallic blue um, and mixing all of those together in another pot for a bit of a dirty pour, pouring it in um, and seeing what it creates. And hopefully it'll be a little bit better for these succulents than these little pink Ikea pots, which I'm not a fan of. So uh, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to mix up the resin and I'll come back when it's ready. So we are back and uh, I've just mixed up the resin. It's got in the bubble removal machine and uh, it's taken most of those bubbles out. And I've just realized something. In editing this video, I've just deleted a whole other video, <laughs> uh, which I've done. So uh, I'm gonna have to redo that one, but it was quite a nice little project. So I am gonna redo the video for you guys, but part of the frustrations of being a, an artist on, on sort of YouTube, I suppose. But if it's your first time here, welcome. If you're a regular viewer, great to have you back and really appreciate all the support over the past few weeks and months. We're at 6,800 subscribers, which is amazing. Um, and I really hope we can push that to get to sort of 10,000, probably not before Christmas now, but just as soon as we can. So if you can do me a favor before we crack on, just hit that button there, subscribe to the channel. It makes the world of difference, but let's get on with the project. So um, first things first, I'm just gonna split this evenly, well, as evenly as I can into these four little cups. I'm gonna be stopping using these soon as well because I've managed to get um, off of Timu, for a reasonable price, more of these ones, which I just absolutely love because they're so easy to clean um, and you reuse them time and time again. So I think that they're, they're absolutely great. So, and I'm also, I've dedicated the whole day tomorrow to sorting out my workstation um, because I've got more stuff now. I need to reorganize it so that hopefully these videos look a little bit neat for you guys rather than uh, messy chaos at times. <laughs> Um, but I think that's part of being creative sometimes, you know, just going with the art and um, the art takes priority rather than cleanliness. I've always been, uh, when I do cooking, I'm a bit of a messy cook, but I think most creative people are. <laughs> but I do still like to bring it back every now and then. So, I say, just trying to get these as even as possible. And don't worry, guys, I'm not just going to mix these up and do a dirty pour. Uh, it wouldn't be very me if I did that. Um, I'm going to try something which I haven't tried before in a dirty pour. And in one of these colours, probably the white, I'm going to add a little drop of silicone oil um, and see 
if that makes any difference to the overall effect and if it does to just the white that I'm putting it in. So I think that's going to be an interesting experiment. So they're pretty even now and I'm going to save this cup because that's actually what I'm going to use for the dirty pour. So first colour I'm going to mix up is this copper, which is a lovely, lovely colour. So I'm going with sort of two metallics here and two pigments as well. So I don't know if that will create any different effect or not, um, but we will see. And I'm deliberately putting quite a bit in here. I want these to be reasonably heavy because as I say, they're going in a plant pot. I want those colors to be vibrant. I want them to be bold. I want them to stand out, you know, rather than that horrible pink, uh, plain terracotta style that I got from Ikea. So that's my first one, that's my copper. Gonna mix that up. And the plan is here is to do kind of a puddle pour. So I'm just gonna pour them into the pot and then create it into a dirty pour, which is then pouring the whole pot into this flower pot and seeing if we get some uh, interesting results. But I love this copper. It's one of my favorite colors. And I wish I could remember where I got this mica set from just for this color, um, because it's stunning. It's almost chocolatey copper. Um, which I think is amazing. And always make sure guys, when you're mixing your colors, especially with micas, really, really mix them. Otherwise you're gonna get little air bubbles full of mica powder that will explode when you pour. So just scrape the sides and make sure it's all mixed up properly. So that's the first color, the copper. Um, should we do these in order? So leave the white till last. So I'll do the metallic blue next which again is just one of these pigment pastes. I'll be honest, I got it from Timu, so there's no particular brand, but it is a really nice color. I used it in um, my ocean art um, that I did recently, creating waves, and it came out absolutely stunning. But again, you don't need a lot, guys. Just scrape your stick, and whatever's left will be more than enough for a pot of this size. I've also got a uh, metallic paste and a purple as well, which I got at the same time, which is, is also really, really nice. Um, so just going to mix up the blue and you'll see it's quite a strong colour once you've mixed it in. Really, really strong pigmented colour. But it's it's almost that metallic blue shimmer it gives. One of my favourite blues. Um, but again, just make sure you mix it around as much as you can so it's all evenly mixed. So that is my blue. Next I'm going to use this metallic -y gold. Um, which are going to be quite heavy. I'm hoping it doesn't take over the whole piece. I'm just going to put the smallest bit. Oh, I got more than I wanted in there. So this will be a quite a thick gold. <laughs> oh dear, it could be one of those projects where nothing goes right. Um, but again, just going to mix it in. Hopefully mix them around all of that mica. And the, the standard rule is as well with your micas, guys, you don't want to mix in more than 10% of the amount to your resin. Otherwise, it won't work properly. And as you can see, just because I put more mica in this than what I expected to, use your scoops, that way it won't happen. I'm just really mixing it around, making sure that all of that powder is hopefully off the sides and really mixed in. But again, that's a beautiful gold. Um, it's a really bright, vibrant one. So that's the gold. So nothing too spectacular there. That's just three separate colors that I've mixed up. The next one I think is where it will get a little bit interesting, hopefully. So again, I've got this metallic, almost white. It, for me, it's more of a pearl color um, pigment paste. And I'm gonna, first of all, get the color. So again, just mixing that round. Whatever's left on my stick is what I'll end up using. Like so. But then, and I'm just debating adding something else as well, but I'll come back to that in a second. And I think I will to each of them. Um, so that is almost that pearlescent white. As you can see, really, really nice color. Um, almost, as I say, pearlescent white to me. But what I'm gonna do, just to make this a little bit more interesting for all of the colors, I've got this cat's eye alcohol ink that I made in a separate video, which is basically six different cat's eye powders mixed up with some 99% alcohol. So I'm gonna drop 
probably four drops of this in each. And if this works, hopefully that will actually bring all the colors together as well. And then just to the white, none of the others, I'm gonna add just a couple of drops of silicone oil and see if that creates any difference in cells or anything like that. But literally two drops is all I'm gonna add because I don't want it to overtake it, but literally one, two, ooh, probably three drops actually ended up in there then. Um, and then mix them all up and see what happens. So I'm gonna mix this around again because I put those cat's eye uh, alcohol ink in there and I wanna make sure that that is mixed around. And I'm just hoping that that will just give it a bit more of a glisten on the surface. So that's that one. Again with the blue, just to mix around those cat's eye particles that I've just mixed in. And what I do find with the cat's eye ones, they're a little bit heavy. Um, so sometimes that you get a bit of sinking with them, but um, not all the time. And then the gold again. And then the white. And now I'm gonna take the sticks out, give them a wipe so they can be reused the next day. Although tomorrow, as I say, I'm dedicated to tidying the workstation. So I might treat myself at the end of that to uh, a small UV project or something like that. But I'm not planning to do a big project tomorrow because I just want to get everything in order so that I'm nice and neat and organized again, ready for the next few big projects I've got planned. And again, whilst you're here, guys, if there's ever anything you want to see done that you haven't seen done before, or you've had a crazy idea that you want us to experiment on first um, so that you can hopefully learn from any mistakes I make, then put it in comments, you know? I like to get the community's ideas. I like to get the community's suggestions. And wherever possible, I like to make it happen. Um, so <laughs> give me as many crazy ideas as you've got. And I haven't got a clue what this is going to come out like, but I'm hoping it'll be better than that plain pink terracotta pot. So all I'm going to do now before I actually pour these into there is just literally layer them into this cup. So I'm going to start off with gold. Just a little bit on the base like that. Then the white. Again, trying to get it in the centre, but if I don't, it doesn't really bother me for this because they're going to all mix and blend, hopefully. Blue. Copper. And then we're back to the start, so gold. And hopefully we're gonna get a really interesting blend of colors, especially with that silicone oil in this white. I think it's gonna give us, hopefully, a unique mix of colors. And this is the fun part because you never know what it's gonna look like, uh, even in the cup before you pour. And again, just by doing it in layers, I'm hoping that we're gonna get a different texture or effect. But I'm not going to stir this because I just want to see what the, what colours and what shapes and what the, the resin naturally does. And if I've got any spare, you know me, I'll always have a spare mould. <laughs> so this is going to be the last layer. Trying to get it all in. And in fact, I'm going to save a bit of the white for the top. So I'm just going to put a little bit in there and then I'm going to use that on the top. Just gut feeling. But let me know in comments, guys, what kind of effect you think we're going to get. Is it going to be good or not? Uh, the rest of that copper. And now the last bit of the white. So that is me layering it all back up. 
I'm praying that I've got enough now. <laughs> um, so the exciting part is here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour half of it first. And look at those colors already. Absolutely stunning. So I wanna get this about halfway. Like that. And look at that. It's creating a cool effect. I think that's the silicone oil, to be honest. Um, and now I'm just gonna give it a squish around to try and force any air bubbles that might be in there out. Because the last thing I want, if this does come out with a cool effect, is air bubbles. And now I'm just gonna go around and completely fill it. But I'm loving the colors as a blend. It's almost giving me Egyptian vibes. And I'm just hoping I've got enough here. And I don't know why I haven't, because as I say, um, there's a little bit left in the cups, but not a lot. And that looks like is about an ounce missing. So I might have to do some improvisation here. Um, this should be the right amount though. So I'm just a bit confused. <laughs> Do you ever have that way where you completely measure everything out? So again, I'm just gonna scrape everything out into the cup. It's gonna give us a slightly different blend, I think, on this bottom layer to what we had in the top. But there should be enough. And I don't know why there isn't. So maybe this is it. It's just the remainder that is in these cups. And normally I over mix the resin. I don't under mix usually. There's probably about half an ounce left in these cups, but for me, that mold looks like it needs more than that. So this is where I wouldn't ever recommend you guys do this, but just to be safe, I'm gonna add a little bit of resin to this as well. Cause I don't think there's going to be enough. Although there is an ounce in there. I'm just wondering whether it's just a top heavy mold. Um, what do you guys recommend? Do I just go with it? I've got about one ounce left in there, but that to me doesn't look anywhere near full. So I'm going to pour what I've got left in and then see where we are. But yeah, we're definitely going to be short. So I obviously didn't measure it right. So luckily I've got my pump one-to-one -one resin at the side of me from Let's Resin. So I'm just literally gonna do a squirt of each, which should give me an accurate amount and then mix it round with whatever's left in that cup um, with one of my big mixing sticks. Because again, I don't want it to just be a transparent layer. So scraping around all those sides. And again, I know this is gonna give us a slightly different effect on the base to what we've got on the top. But again, needs must. So I'm just mixing it all around and this will actually be kind of a solid color, which actually I think will look good on the base. More of a solid gold. You see how the gold takes over, even though there's all of those colors in there. Um, but you never know the silicone oil that's in there might still continue to mix it round. So this is what I do if ever I've undermixed, which is very rare, but I'll just put a couple of squirts of each of the resin and the hardener, which I've got in my pump um, on my workstation. And hopefully that will give me enough to just finish off the project. It's not ideal um, because I think we are gonna lose some of that color effect, but I want the mold to be full. Oh, don't tell me I still haven't mixed enough. Come on. That is so close. Well, it does cover that surface, but it still doesn't look completely full. So I must have completely mismeasured this um, by about an ounce, which as I say, it's, it's very unlike me. I normally over mix rather than under mix. So maybe I just wasn't paying attention guys. So apologies for that. I am gonna scrape this out though, because ideally I don't wanna mix anymore if I don't have to. And it is pretty full. It's just not to the brim. 
So I'm just scraping every last drop out. And then I, what I want to do is before I get to the top, which is now, is I can see little air bubbles just underneath that. So what I'm going to do is get, grab a silicone tool. One of my new ones from Timu. <laughs> um, and just go around the inside edge to try and encourage any of those bubbles that are in there, which are normally around the edge of these molds, like so. Just want to encourage them out like that. And I am going to persist because for me, this is so close to being full. I don't think it's going to take a lot and I don't want to mix any more resin up at this point. So I'm expecting this to be quite a dark metallic colour um, when it comes out with hopefully little glistens of those cat's eye powders coming out um, and hopefully creating a really cool effect and I'm intrigued as to what the silicone oil is going to do. literally scraping every little drop out of the cup now just to try and get it full but I must have mismeasured it at the start so apologies for that guys that that was me um and I think that's all I'm going to get out of that cup so there's still the tiniest bit in these so I'm gonna again completely scrape them <laughs> which is going to get messy um just to make sure I've got every last drop of resin in here and I think it's pretty full. It's not far off. And with it being a dirty pour, it doesn't really matter um, because we're mixing all the colours together anyway. But again, just want to use every drop so that hopefully it is filled to the brim. And ideally what I'm looking for is it to have a slight dome on it because then I know it's going to be flat when I demold it. But I'm going to fast forward past this so you guys don't have to watch 20 minutes of me scraping every last drop of resin out that I can get. Um, and then we'll come back for tomorrow for demold. So it's a dead straightforward project today. Um, probably a lot shorter than most of my videos. So some of you like the shorter content, some of you like the longer content. Again, let me know in comments. Do me a favour, like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys tomorrow for demold. Morning guys, and it's the next day, and look at this, clean workstation. <laughs> Took a good few hours, but it looks a lot better now, so I'm happy with that. And it is time to obviously demold this piece. Um, and I'm excited for this, just to see what it looks like. So let's demold. And I've never demolded one of these before, so again, it's the first, <laughs> first time I've demolded. Just gonna try and be gentle and squeeze it out. Pretty much. There we go. And I love the different colours. You can just see those shades coming through. Uh, the gold has pretty much taken over. Um, <laughs> and I didn't seem to get any different effect from using the silicone oil. Um, it's the edge that I like the most on it, to be honest. Um, and as I say, you can still see those different shades of copper sort of coming through the background and the blue, but really like that. For me, it's a lot better than the uh, the pink terracotta pot that the plant was in. Um, let me know what you think in comments, guys. Um, but again, five ounces of resin. I've probably got about another 20 of these to do. A um, little bit of sanding to do around the side just to get rid of a couple of those little sharp edges. But apart from that, do you know what? I think it's a really nice pot. And I think in the different lights, you get the different shades of colors. Um, and it's got that nice geometric pattern as well. So again, let me know what you think in comments, guys, whether you think it's been a success, whether you like it or not. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next one.